This is DIY Mushroom Tech with Chapter 1.2. Now you will learn the important parts about the fungi life cycle. Hey. My name is Daniel, I am from Germany, and I will be your host. In this video I will explain how mushrooms reproduce, and how they mature into adulthood to reproduce. This is also called the circle of life. Before we start. I did put a lot of work into this lecture series. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you want to consider to buy me a coffee? There is a serious reason why I ask. In life there is balance everywhere. Summer and winter, day and night, hot and cold, and so on. It's obviously natural, that taking and giving is also a polarity that needs to be in balance. Only when there is balance can we, as humans, achieve harmony and genuine happiness. That means, if you take something for example from the internet, you should also give something back. Please check for yourself if your life is in balance. If you want, you can support me with a donation. That would be great. You could also support any other good project. Send someone a smile, leave somewhere a nice comment, or just be joyous and spread some love. Let us start. Remember that I am not a trained mycologist or biologist. That means, that the words I use should not be taken too serious as I do not always cling to their exact definitions. These charts are a mere simplification of the fungi life cycle. The fungi I am interested in mainly live in forests. There they have the function of garbage disposal. That means the decomposing of wood. Yes. There are also fungi, that can compose crude oil, and maybe there will be discoveries of fungi that can also decompose plastic. I am also not interested in parasitic fungi. My fungi friends are the mainly saprotrophic fungi. As they break down non-living organic matter, they could be called karma-free. To be karma-free it not achievable by us humans but is a goal to strive for. In the air there are always some spores. When the conditions are right, they germinate and create hyphae. When they meet, they can fuse and grow into a branching network of hyphae. The collative growth of hyphae is called mycelium. Later I will show you some pictures of mycelium from my microscope. Mycelium really looks like a network with super fine branches that conquers everything. The fungus is more like us, than like a plant. It breathes oxygen and releases carbon. The need a high amount of water. If you put too much in your growing substrate it will grow much slower. I never measured the pH value of my substrate. But since you only want to work with natural materials you will always meet the required specifications. Temperature is also an important input value. I keep my mushrooms in my basement next to my heating system. This way I can assure constant temperatures during the whole year. That is not always good, but you can always take them out for a while to give them a temperature shock. This may be required to induce pinning. Pinning is the point when there is the formation of primordia. You will notice some pin that will then continue to grow into what most people call mushroom. It actually is just the fruiting body. The lifespan of the fruiting body depends on the species. The fruiting body of a gourmet mushroom does not last very long. Normally, it will start to lift up their underskirt and release their spores. The spores will germinate when they meet correct environment conditions. As spores are not healthy for human respiratory system, we will need to deploy an encapsulated growing environment with under pressure. With the newly established knowledge, you know can cherish the complex circle of fungi life. I hope you liked my drawings. Next, as promised, we will look at some pictures I took with my microscope. Here we see some mycelium on agar grow substrate on a microscope slide. When we zoom in, we notice the network of branches that is the mycelium. In this case I took some Heracium arenaceus mycelium. Here I zoomed in a little bit more. The network becomes more visible. So, this is what Heracium arenaceus mycelium looks like. Let's look at Reishi mycelium, and how it differs. 
This time I took a sample of grain spawn. The mycelium is also white. This does not always need to be the case. I singled out three rykorns. Let us zoom in. With a 25 fold magnification, on can already notice that these corns are connected by the mycelium. The 50 fold magnification reveals that the mycelium is able to bridge through the thin air. The 100 fold magnification shows how freakishly small these branches are. Of course, the mycelium is not only on the top of the grains but is also growing inside it to do its decomposing job. With reaching a 200 fold magnification the problems of focusing and getting a clear image becomes obvious. Since I do not use any image stacking, and mainly use my microscope with my own eyes, I can only provide you with a glimpse of the real look. The 500 fold magnification depicts that the edges of the corn are not perfectly even. They are edgy. One can also see that the whole corn is already conquered by the mycelium. This is the highest magnification I can currently achieve. It is a 1000 fold magnification. It looks quite impressive. I do not have taken any spores pictures yet. Spores are often sampled to identify the correct wild species that you have gathered. When I update this video, I will include some more pictures and incorporate more mushroom knowledge. In the next video we will look into the upcoming tutorials. I will tell you which ones will be covered. When we match the life cycle with the main tutorials, we see that they cover the whole fungi life cycle. One could start with spores on agar, but it is much easier to take some tissue from a fruiting body and put that on agar. This technique is called agar cloning. It is much easier to accomplish and can directly be applied to as many agar petri dishes as you wish. After cloning, the main concern is to gain enough mycelium to shorten the time the fungi needs to colonize a bag of wood. For fruiting we will then need to correct growing conditions. That means, temperature, humidity and airflow. These conditions will be covered when we discuss the application of a grow tent. You have already your favorite video about mycology? Please share it with your colleagues. Post a link in the comment section. You have other addition information, that could be helpful for someone? Please also feel free to post it. Many thanks in advance. Here is one video I really like. It is by Professor Fink. If you look for him on YouTube you will find many more videos. They cover an interesting range of topics. I hope you like them as much as I do. That's it for today. The deeper you look into mushrooming the more their wonders are growing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am looking forward to see you again soon. Bisbald.